What's the word, y'all? For the first time in the playoffs, I'm recording this video upload the same night. Let's let's see how it goes. Game two of the NBA Finals just wrapped up. Jamal Murray just took a tough shot, missed. And, but, but the Denver Nuggets always made that comeback in the last couple minutes. It was electric. It is what we want in the NBA Finals. Back and forth swing, superstar performances, a superstar who had been struggling all game long, stepping up in the fourth quarter, hitting some shots, and of course, I'm talking about Duncan Robinson. No, but for real, Dun Duncan Robinson, I cannot believe this man was getting DMP coach decisions. Now, most of it is warranted because he wasn't very good for the bet better part of the regular season, but he went from DMP Co's decisions to, to basically becoming one of the best players on the court in the NBA Finals game in the fourth quarter. The whole playoff run where he's been getting minutes, he, you know he's got the reputation of one of the best shooters in the league. That's how he made $90 million in that uh, 2020 NBA Finals run. $90 million to be a shooter. He's shooting, of course. He's a threat, of course. But, brother, he's putting it on the ground what I've ever seen before. And beforehand, we see him have a nice two-man game with him and Bam Adebayo again. That's one of the reasons he got paid. But now it's more than just a two-man game with, with uh, Bam Adebayo. It's curling. It's backdoor cutting. It's taking a few dribbles and going up strong and flexing. Duncan Robinson really did that today. As a neutral fan, I cannot lie to you. I'm happy. I'm happy with this outcome right now. Because after game one, I was very skeptical about the Miami Heat's, not their ability to win games because they, they showcase along the way that they can win in these high leverage games against really good teams. But it felt like they would struggle to, to keep the offensive firepower enough to keep up with the Denver Nuggets. And game two, this is why Eric Spolster is one of the greatest and, and ever, I was going to say he's one of the greatest in the league. You can argue he is the greatest in the league right now. But he's one of the greatest ever because the game plan switched. Boom. We got Kevin Love back in the lineup. And the Kevin Love stat line, I don't even know what it looked like. Let, let me double check. Six and ten. It wasn't crazy. But, but the impact was there. He makes that adjustment. And they basically empowered the guys to continue to shoot. You know, the, the same game plan that got them to this NBA Finals, they didn't steer too much away from it. But I thought in that first quarter when they opened up on this crazy run, they were doing a lot of actions that were not against Nikola Jokic. See, a lot of teams going into a series against the Denver Nuggets is going to run Nikola Jokic a high pick and roll, put him in as many defensive actions as possible. And in the first quarter of this game, they kind of let Bam Adebayo kind of chill and was running two-man games with some of the guards, and that was very interesting. And it opened the game up with who? With Max Struess hit a couple threes right off rip. Gabe Vincent hit a couple threes right off rip. And I'm like, okay, if the Miami Heat are going to win this game, they got to shoot great from three-pointers, which is something they've done for the majority of this playoff series. But in the first half, I was very scared for the Heat because I thought they looked like the better team. If there was no scoreboard in this game and you was just going off vibes, you was going off what the access was saying, it looked like the Miami Heat were the better team in the first half and they went into halftime losing. Losing. And I was like, man, they played what seemed like a near perfect half. I say near perfect because they had a, a couple of really bad turnovers to start off the second quarter or whatever. Near perfect half and they still down. The Denver Nuggets looked bad for the first half, and they were still up right now. They went on a stretch that run where Christian Brown came in and did great things. Bruce Brown came in and did great things. Like, they, they had those moments, that big stretch where it was like 16-3 run. But for the most part, I felt like in the first half, the Miami Heat looked like the better team, and yet they were losing. So I ain't have a lot of hope come second half. Because if they look like the better team in the first half and they're losing, what better can they do? And then the third quarter came around, and, and Nikola Jokic was given... Cody Zeller, the absolute work. I think he had 16 points in the third quarter alone. It was 18 points. Regardless, Nikola Jokic, again, looked like the best player in the world for that stretch. And I cannot help but to think that the, that the Cody Zeller minutes are going to be completely zero come next game. Because the, the runs that the Miami Heat could potentially go on with that bench or what, what had been successful for the first couple series where their bench unit came in and didn't feel like it was a bench unit. When Cody Zeller was out there against Jokic, it was Cook Session. It was barbecue chicken, ladies and gentlemen. It was as easy as it could be for the, for the two-time MVP. But the Miami Heat, and I guess uh, Mark Jackson said this on the call in game one, that if he was coaching, remember Mark Jackson, for what it is, I know he's a commentator now, really good coach in this time. He's had ups and downs, of course, but I, I would say for the most part, really good coach. He said that if he was coaching against Nikola Jokic, he would make Nikola Jokic be the offensive star in, in terms of score. Take, take away every other aspect of the game for Nikola Jokic. Make him drop 40. Make him drop 50. And try to win with preventing Michael Porter Jr., preventing Jamal Murray, all these other dudes from contributing. And, 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 and the Miami Heat did exactly that. Nikola Jokic had 41-11 and just four assists and five turnovers. That That's it's so stupid. This I don't mean that it's a bad game because he had 41 points. But the four assists to five turnover ratio is something that Nikola Jokic doesn't do. 
They completely gobbled up all the passing lanes, and that was that is one of the reasons, that is the main reason for this team's success. That Nikola Jokic is a wizard with the ball. He finds people on the cuts, he finds the shooters, he does all of this, and they completely got rid of all of that. They said, Jokic, give us buckets. He did. <laughs> he did exactly that. But one man is not going to win a basketball game. As, as much as we, say, we, we try to feel that way, you know what I'm saying? With Braun doing what he did for a decade, like one man can't win a basketball game. Well, I'll take that back. One man can't win a basketball game. One man can't win a series of basketball games. And Jokic is looking around for the most part of this game like, man, okay, I'm going to need somebody else. And that fourth quarter came around. Duncan Robinson went on his individual, was a 10-0, again, I cannot, his individual 10-0 run. And the Denver Nuggets are trying to figure out what to do. Jokic is still doing his thing. Jamal Ray comes off the bench with like eight minutes to go. And he helped them put together a run. I was like, no way. If the Miami Heat blow this game, wraps. It's wraps. Series is over. Now, I know it's hard to say that, right? It's hard to say that because a series don't, don't start until a road team wins a game. But if you go in the last couple minutes of a game and you blow a game in the NBA Finals, it's demoralizing. And maybe I shouldn't be saying that because it's the same Miami Heat team that gave up a game when it lay up to, to, uh, to Derek White in a game six that came out in the game seven to close it out. So maybe there's no such thing as a must win for them until it's literally a must win. But if they would have blown that game, I would have felt really good about Denver Nuggets and five. Now I don't really feel that way because Eric Spolstra did his thing and the players stepped up. The main changes in this one were, were they were aggressive when it came to drawing fouls. Uh, Jimmy Butler again. I mean, the game and the, the team in general had two free throws last game, the lowest in NBA Finals history. Yada yada yada. In this game, Jimmy got to the line five times. Bam got his five free throws. Max Struess drew a three point foul. Um, Gabe Vincent drew one. Kyle, why did KCP foul seventeen jump shooters today? That's what it felt like. Cal Lara drew his, and this was this has been the recipe for them. Like you got to get to the free. Oh, the recipe to win basketball games in general. You got to get to the free throw line. You got to knock them down. They shot ninety percent there, and then they also nearly shot fifty percent. From three. That's beautiful basketball. And last game, I think Bam Adebayo had 25 points on 26 shots, where, where it felt like the Denver Nuggets idea behind guarding them is like, hey, let Bam do Bam. He going to shoot like 50% on those mid-range jump shots, 50% on 26 shots. We, we feel good because that means what is, okay, I'm not going to get into math. So one point per, one point per shot attempt, I don't, forget it. Uh, one point per shot attempt. We like our, our chances against that, even if we don't shoot well. And they didn't even shoot well last game. Um, and they, they still ended up winning this one. Now you're looking around like, dang, Michael Porter Jr., he had a couple big blocks in game one. Today I felt like a few of them, he got two fouls today. A few of them were like, actually, different nuggets in general. You got fouling on jump shooting and a bunch of fast break fouls that didn't need to happen. Where one of them, was it Gabe Vincent? Gabe Vincent got a steal. Um, Bruce Brown and, and Christian Brown trying to get back and Christian Brown fouled just trying to contest the layup when in reality Gabe Vincent had that all together. Bam Adebayo slipped the screen and dunked the ball and from the help side you got Michael Porter Jr. who just tapped him on the arm. Not, not hard enough to prevent him from dunking the ball. He still dunked the ball. There was a lot of defensive miscues in this one and that's unlike the Denver Nuggets at least in the playoffs. Like in the regular season they had the ups and downs defensively, right? I think to start off the first couple months of the season they were like 21st in basketball and, and me, I remember vividly me and the guy we're talking about on the pod, like, can you win a championship as good as this team could potentially be if this is your defense? Now, altogether, once the season got to the nitty gritty and got to the end, they were a lot better than that. And that's even with in January or early February, they were struggling. They lost like whatever many in a row. Their defense came together. And in the playoffs, they had been really good defensively. This game, they felt lost. Where there is a few times in this one where there's miscommunications on the screen or whatever. And I I, I remember seeing Jamal Murray literally look at KCP like, like do one of these, like directional, like trying to figure out what the hell is happening because this is not the same stuff that was happening in the first couple of series. I'm just happy we got a series at this point, man. I'm just happy we got a series at this point because uh, the ball arena had been a place that nobody can win. It was Alcatraz. It was like if you were coming in there when they've been altitude or the, the home court advantage from the fans or Jokic and the guys just knowing those courts and those rims better, they had been unstoppable at this place. And now it is a 1-1 series going back to Miami. Miami just stole home court advantage, y'all. That's cr this is an 8 seed we're talking about. I've been seeing a lot of stuff with people saying this is the fakest eight seed in history. Regardless, they're still an eight seed. I know they were, they were one shot away from the conference finals last year, and they were in the NBA finals a few years before that. Still, they're a genuine eighth seed team, and Tyler Hero might play next game. I, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing for the way this team has been playing over the last seven weeks without him. But I'm just saying, you need more offensive firepower potentially because this is another. Okay, it was a 111 or 108. 
And 2023, that feels like a low-scoring game. This, am I bugging? I don't know. I've been saying this since Duncan Robinson got injured. Well, not Duncan Robinson. Since Tyler Hero got injured, when we start to had a conversation, oh, should they bring him back or whatever, whatever. I am of the belief that you bring him back, but you don't guarantee anything. You don't guarantee that he's going to start over Max Struess, even though Max Struess struggled in game one and shot 40% tonight, but hit some big shots in that first quarter. You don't guarantee him a start. You don't guarantee him that he's getting 30 minutes, 20 minutes a game. You play him in the flow, just like you've been playing the rest of these guys in the flow. Last series, Caleb Martin damn near was the Eastern Conference Player of the Year, Eastern Conference MVP or whatever you want to call it. He's, he's, he played 21 minutes tonight. You know, you got to run with whatever unit is working. And this, oh, this is actually the second game in a row where the Miami Heat went on an individual run when, when Jimmy Butler was on the bench starting the fourth quarter. And then we like, okay, where's Jimmy? Obviously, I know everybody keeps showing the clip of uh, Josh Hart in the second round in the playoffs where he got underneath Jimmy Butler, and that's where he sprained his ankle, whatever, whatever. His ankle's hurting him. He won't say it completely, but we understand that. But even within, he hit some big-time shots in this one, man. He hit some big-time shots. And I'm a firm believer that if you struggle for three quarters but you hit some big shots, your team win, you had a good game. Genuinely. That, I, I am a firm believer in that, and I feel like we got that from Jimmy Butler. Now, if he didn't hit those big shots... And, he, and, and then they lost. And we're like, oh, Jimmy, what are you doing? But that's just that's just the way it works. You win a basketball game, it's all praise. You lose a basketball game, it's where are you? It's just, it's just the reality of sports in general. Jimmy Butler started off this game um, on Jamal Murray. And I thought he gave him some really good problems. Even on the last shot of the game, I thought Jimmy Butler was reaching in and draw, like, to, to intentionally foul. Because they're up by three. The different nuggets are in the bonus. I mean, if you want to play the numbers game, you, you play the free throws. You're a 90% free throw shooting team right now. Play the free throw game. He reached in, didn't get the call, and then played straight up defense and forced the miss. And I thought that was the case for the majority of this game when they were matched up against each other. So uh, the, the Miami Heat might have found something defensively um, by allowing Jokic to do Jokic and not allowing him to pass. I don't know. Again, the way these series goes and these games go, just like how Eric Spolster came into game two, guns blazing with some new strategies. I'm assuming Michael Malone will do the same thing because these are two of the better coaches in basketball. So only time will tell, man. Let me know what you think. I saw a lot. Listen, listen I, was at a, I was at a wedding in Toronto yesterday, and everybody there knows me as a basketball guy. Um, and it's a gift and a curse, right? Because everybody wants to talk to you about hoops because that's what they know you for. And uh, everybody was saying, like, listen, I'm feeling Denver at four. I'm feeling Denver in four. And I was like, ah, I can't. I can't say that. I have to give at least some respect to the Miami Heat. Though I do believe, like, my prediction was the Denver Nuggets to win this series, I can't say it's about to be a sweep because I feel like Spostra is winning you a game. I feel like a Jimmy Butler can win you a game. And I think we got probably a combination of that today that I couldn't say it was four. Is it five? One way or another, it might be five. It could be six. I'm hoping for at least six for, for personal reasons, and you'll understand that later down the line. Just know that if, if, if there is a game six, I'm in Miami and I'm working. That's all you need to know. Uh, I will see y'all soon.